Good morning, folks. Today we've got space weather, deadly storms on Earth, more coming, and science news that ranges from cool to confusing. Let's get started with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours with the central coronal hole slowly turning through. We expected solar wind to arrive at Earth as we enter the weekend, but right now the previous coronal hole stream is waning away. Bottom two panels are plasma speed and temperature, both dropping back into normal range there, and as they do so, the magnetometers regain smaller, smoother curves, and the KP index drops out to the bottom. The earthquakes continued at magnitude 6 range in Japan yesterday. Must admit that South America is becoming more concerning with its blood echo activity. Volcanoes continued as well. Stromboli in Italy with an eruption that set the hillsides on fire, sent a hot flow into the sea which chased away boaters who were a bit too close to the island. Traumatic moments in Morocco, as a biblical-like flood came so fast it took everyone by surprise. The disaster unfolded as they scrambled for safety. Looking ahead, we've got a hurricane approaching the east coast. Forecast models are a bit wide. I've got the northernmost impact showing in the model, followed by the southernmost forecast track, and while there is some considerable variability in the forecasts, they do all pretty much agree that Dorian's going to impact Florida as a hurricane. Let's go to the sun and solar flares and see pre-flare magnetic ropes in the corona. It has long been our contention that the large loops are as indicative of imminent flaring as the sunspot magnetism at the photosphere, and these scientists agree that the motions and character are indicative of their stability, or lack thereof. Up next, we're visiting exoplanets and sticking with the hot Jupiters. It turns out that their nightside temperatures have two odd characteristics. First, they seem to be uniform, matching other hot Jupiters across the viewing study. But second, and far more interestingly, they say that their extreme temperatures make their atmosphere made of metal and rock. It's so hot, it's in gas form. Gaia up next, taking the first step in unraveling the interconnectedness of our galaxy. Visibility is currently only good enough to model our local group and segment star families, but even still, they are noticing the stars forming longer lines and filamentary structures, still displaying their connection to each other and their common genesis from a larger magnetic molecular cloud. If you remember the plasma cosmology movie, the star-forming regions are dominated by plasma turbulence and magnetic fields, not gravity and chaos, which is why they're all interconnected. We're staying with the Milky Way for the final story. Brand new, best ever infrared views of the center of the galaxy and, frustratingly, the primary image is confusing. So SGR A, Sagittarius A, is supposedly the center of the galaxy where the nucleus can be found. They claim to have it labeled and, boy, it doesn't look like they labeled the right point, did they? Furthermore, the arrow starts in what appears to be the right place, the brightest point, and then points off to seemingly nowhere. The conclusion? I suppose that would depend on if they made a mistake in annotation or not. Wink. I swear you can even see the near side ring of the dusty Taurus around the bright point. We greatly appreciate your support. Last day for the Kira and Lulu Sun and Planets Children's Books 2-pack deal. We also got a batch of damaged textbooks, so they are discounted too at otf.sells.com. Folks, the VIP tickets for OTF 2020, 60% gone. General admission down 25%, observatoryproject.com for more details. If you need to catch up, we've got all three films we released this month, link below the video in the description box. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.